Welcome everyone. We're going to discuss this very controversial topic throughout the whole world. We can stop sinning. That is God's truth. Others say, no, we can stop sinning. That is Satan's lie. Because in this particular topic, we are comparing character of God and the character of Satan. In the Bible, these two opposing characters are really clearly revealed. God's character of love, mercy, fear, justice, righteousness, and holiness. Whereas Satan's character is exactly opposite to God's character. He is evil, cruel, liar, tyrant, murderer, wickedness, rebellion, unjust, and righteousness, and many others. One of the main issues of the great controversy between God and the devil is that God's law. Satan charged God's law is arbitrary, harsh, and unjust, and it is impossible to keep by his creatures. There is no real joy in keeping God's law. That is his preaching. It is restricted one's freedom, but Jesus came as human and reputed this charge. He showed in his perfect life of obedience to God's law that human who follow and believe him can obey his law and live a life without transgressing his law. This issue will be settled forever when God will answer Satan charges through his people that they can keep all God's holy law in the end time. This is when they attain Christian perfection. Character perfection of God's people. Satan represents God's law of love as a law of selfishness. He declares that it is impossible for us to obey its precept. The Sarah of Ages, page 24. The Lord designed through his people to answer Satan's charges by showing the result of obedience to the right principles. Christ Object Lesson 296. It means by keeping God's law through his grace, strength, power would result in stopping sin. This is character perfection that answers Satan's charges against God's character. So Christ is waiting with longing desire for manifestation of himself in his church when the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people then he will come to claim them as his own. Christ object lesson 69. So this character of character perfection will take place according to the Bible in the darkest hour of history of sin of this planet when all forces of the evil try to destroy God's people in the entire world with all kinds of evils as predicted in the Bible. This would be accomplished by the last generation who will never violate God's law because they have Christ's character. And so these two contending views started from Eden and until now. What is God's plan? Before we were, the worst world was created, before human was created, according to Paul, this is the plan of God. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Holiness without blame, that is a character of perfection that God planned before everything was created on this planet. So to read this state of holiness and blamelessness means Christians have to stop sinning. Because when we don't stop sinning, how can we be holy? How can we be without blame before him in love? But Christians are in the great divide over the two issues. Genuine Christians assert that one can stop sinning. The unsure Christian or the miscellaneous Christian 
A firm one cannot stop sinning because this is impossible. That is Satan's preaching. So who speaks the truth? In this subject, we will not discuss how to stop sinning, even sinless perfection. Probably another time. But I stand on the conviction that a true Christian can stop sinning as it is revealed in God's word, the eternal truth. It is a sheer good news for everyone, for every genuine, genuine Christians to know and understand this very controversial biblical topic could be resolved. Hence, this issue is not shrouded with mystery, but a plain revelation in God's word. When Jesus came, he came as a man. He did not see. The record from Genesis 3 to Revelation 22, sin has been unmasked as contagious, tyrant master, seriously deadly problem of human race. The sinfulness of sin is marked with brightest and darkest colors, character, and sin ruins everything it touches and in in a destruction. When Jesus was nailed to the cross, who was without sin? The truth that Jesus had no sin in his life, a man like us, with the same fallen nature according to Hebrews 2, verse 17, chapter 4, verse 15, chapter 5, verse 7. He shows in his perfect life by keeping his father's law, living amidst the sinful and sinners for more than 30 years with a constant lure of temptation to sin that is 24-7 in all forms, according to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18 and chapter 4, verse 5. Yet, he did not sin. This indicate that man in his fallen nature, with God's enabling grace and power, one can stop sinning. We cannot exactly follow the pattern, but we can emulate Jesus because the goal of Christian life is to be like Jesus in perfection of character. Let's look at Jesus as the pattern. To stop sinning, every Christian must look unto Jesus as the pattern and the finisher of our faith. And Jesus repeatedly invites us, follow me in several passages of the Bible. He assures us that those who follow him will not walk in the darkness. John 8, 12. The darkness of sin, for he is the light. In fact, he challenges everyone. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. Where I am, there my servant will be also. John 12, 26. And Peter wants us to follow Jesus' death. And he wants, he was really granted what he requested. In fact, we are invited to follow him in heaven. John 21, verse 22. So we need to follow his activities in heaven, what he is doing. To receive power through the Holy Spirit. This verse is in the context of his work in heaven in behalf of his follower from his ascension until to the close of provision. However, many wanted to follow Jesus with a heavy baggage of their own preferred agenda to make them difficult to follow him just like the man who wanted to follow Jesus in Luke chapter 9 verses 61 to 66. Fail to copy the pattern but we can strive to emulate. The saddest thing is that people do not look to Christ instead. Look and compare with other people. Many measure themselves among themselves and compare their lives with the lives of others. This should not be. No one but Christ given us an example. He is our true pattern and it should strive to excel in imitating him. We are co-workers with Christ or a co-worker with the enemy. The statement of volume 1, 126. We are to grow daily in spiritual loveliness. 
we shall fail open in our efforts to copy the divine pattern. We shall open have to bow down to weep at the feet of Jesus because of our shortcomings and mistakes. But we are not to be discouraged. We are to pray more fervently, believe more fully, try again with more steadfast to grow into the likeness of our Lord. As we distrust our own power, we shall trust the power of our Redeemer and render praise to God who is the health of our confidence and our God. Beautiful statement. Beautiful assurance. Selected Messages, Volume 1, 3, 37. Many people have argued that Jesus had advantage over us, but no. Jesus had no advantage over us. There is this is the argument that Jesus had advantage over us since he was a God man. This is not true. In fact, the greatest temptation of Jesus was to use his divinity in which at his own command. He totally depended on his father in everything. Thus, we can emulate him in how we deal with sin that besets us in our Christian struggle with sin. He did not came with the sinless nature of Adam before his fall, since all evidences were diametrically opposed that he had a weaknesses, according to Hebrews 14, 15. The record shows how in the death of his flesh, his humanity, when he had to offer a prayers and supplication with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his godly fear. Hebrews 5 verse 7. Christ came to this earth and lived a perfect life of obedience that men and women through his grace might also live a perfect obedience. This is necessary for salvation. This is not optional. Sin is a personal choice. It's a willful choice. James declared, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say that when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot tempt it by evil, nor does himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when a desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. James 1 verses 12 to 15. So meaning to say, temptation is not a sin. Desire. When a desire is conceived, it gives birth. But when it is fully grown, then sin brings death. So temptation is not sin. It becomes sin when one chooses to do it. The only definition of sin in the Bible is that Whosoever committed sin transgress also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. 1 John 3, 4. Or the King James Version says, uh, the New King James Version says, Whosoever commits sin also commit lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. Lawlessness means breaking the stated God's law. It is this, therefore, deliberate choice in opposition to God's clear stated words. So, sin is a personal choice. And it is love. Probably, you will be surprised this first time you hear that sin is love. Let me explain. As what James says, let no one say he's tempted. Because God cannot be tempted. But when he is drawn away in his own desire and enticed, entertained enticement, 
Then the desire conceived, it gave birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, it brings death. Why I repeat that? Because many people did not understand this piece. This, are, this is the main reason why we commit sin. So we need to understand all of this. For example, it says there, sin is love. Why? Because Psalm 52.3 says, you love evil more than good. Meaning to say, sin is love. Loving evil than good. And lying than speaking righteousness. You love all the boring words, your deceitful tongues. That's what the psalmist says. Sin is misuse of agape love. It is a misuse, abuse, misplace of God's agape love. Let's look at here. It's, this is clear. Sin is transgression of God's law. But why do we transgress? Because we love sin. So let us see. Do not love. The Greek word there is agape. Do not love the world, all the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the last of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. First John 2, 15, verse up to verse 17. So, sin is a misuse, abuse, misplace of agape love. As Demas has it. As the Pharisee did it. Because lawlessness abound, and the love agape of many will grow cold, according to Jesus, Matthew 24, 12. Sin is also friendship with the world. Why is this? When we love the world, we become spiritual adulterers and adulteresses. James says, don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity against God? And whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world, make himself an enemy of God. James 4. That's clear. That's why worldliness is misplaced, abuse, misuse of agape love. We make friends of the world. We become the enemy of God. That's why when we are Christian and we are worldly, we put ourselves in opposition, although our mouth declares that we are God's people. But the way we live, our character is worldly. Actually, we are the enemy of God, and that I call that personal self-deception. The problem with, with temptation and its solution, no temptation has overtaken you except such is a common to man. God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able? But with temptation, will also make a way of escape. That you may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Meaning to say, if there is temptation, God has a way of escape. God has a solution. But we don't want God's solution. We have to solo it ourselves and we cannot make it because we are powerless when we detach our connection with Christ. That's why James says, therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. Or, this is what Paul says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us put him as our clothes and make no provision for flesh to fulfill his flesh. Romans 13, 14. Paul says again, I see that walk in spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do things that you wish. Galatians 5, 16. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust under the punishment for the day of judgment. 2 Peter 2, 9. Meaning to say, Temptations is not sin. We can resist. We can flee from the devil. 
Because we can run. We should not make provision for the flesh. The lust of the flesh. We can walk in the spirit. Because the Lord knows everyone how to deliver the godly out of temptation. So we need to understand. Meaning to say, we can stop sinning. Let's understand the nature of sin. And the power of sin. To God, sin is tyrant. Master. As Jesus answered to them, most as surely as he to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. John 8, 34. Meaning to say, the nature of sin is that once you obey sin, when you are tempted, when you choose to commit that kind of sin, sin is our master. So Jesus offered freedom from the tyranny of sin. Then Jesus said to the Jews, who believe in him, abide in my word. You are my disciple indeed. And when you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. He offered that he will become our master rather than sin or, sin or Satan. What then? Paul says, Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? No. Meaning to say, we can stop sinning because we are under grace. Grace is power. Do you not know that whom you present yourself, slaves to obey? You are the one slaves to whom you obey, whether sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. So we have two masters. If we keep on sinning, our master is sin, and the author of sin is Satan. But when we stop sinning, we obey by faith and through his grace, leading to righteousness, and Jesus is the king of righteousness. So, how to stop sinning? Paul says that every Christian always aware to righteousness and do not sin. So, it is important. Okay? I'm just passing how to stop sinning. Paul briefly declares, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And people negate that claim. He can do all things because of God's grace. It is not because it is not his strength and power who perform it. It is Christ who dwell in him. This is clear in his confession in Galatians. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I, who I live. But Christ lives in me at the life now that I live in the flesh. I live it by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 The indwelling of Jesus in the person make it possible to stop sinning. This indwelling is for all to claim that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted, grounded in love. He understood that the gospel is the power of God. It's not a theory. As many as received them, he gave him power to become sons of God. This power is not in human agents. It is the power of God. When a soul received Christ, he received the power to live the life of Christ. Christ's object lessons 3.14. So how to stop sinning? Because they say, it is impossible to stop sinning. If one would argue that a Christian cannot stop sinning, for that is impossible, let us investigate further God's word. Paul declares, Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself with the same mind, for he has suffered in the flesh, cease from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the last of men, but the will of God. Arm yourself with the same mind of Jesus, and we can stop sinning. So we need to understand that we can stop sinning. So it is here. 
We have to arm ourselves with the same thinking of attitude of Jesus towards him, to stop, to cease from sin. This is not impossible, but very possible, especially when we have a transformed mind. Romans 12, 2. Or we have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2, 16. But when Christians have still carnal mind dominated in their lives, this is not possible, for Christ is not abiding in the heart and his work. Thus, he continues sinning, for sin is the work of the flesh, not the work of the spirit. So, people's biblical reason why they can stop sinning. They said we are born with sin. So we cannot stop. It's the strong reason. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Psalm 50, 51 verse 5. There's no one, there's none righteous, not one. Romans 3 verse 10. There is no just man on earth who does good and do not sin. Ecclesiastes 7.20. For in the sight, no one living righteous, Psalm 143, 2. Who can say, I have made my heart clean? I am pure from sin, Proverbs 20, verse 9. For all stumble in many ways, James 3, 2. With all this, we are hopeless. But this is not the whole picture of the sinners. So these are the texts of those who reason out that they cannot stop sinning. Yes, but all these things could be answered without doubt by the power and promise of God's grace through justification by faith and sanctification because it empowers by the Holy Spirit when the believer claims all this assurance. As for Paul assert, this is faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ came to this world to save sinners, of whom I am the chief. 1 Timothy 1.15 The character of God in Jesus Christ is our hope and strength who is faithful. Let me just in passing. Justification and sanctification are the powerful gifts for stopping sin. Just a person Justified by faith has been forgiven. His heart is cleansed, living a new birth, empowered by the Holy Spirit. That's the confession of David in Psalm 51 when he committed sin of, idol of, of adultery with Bathsheba and murder with Uriah. So the justified is right with God. And sanctification is, is staying with Christ. The two cannot be separated in controlling sin. Sanctification is the indwelling, the abiding of Christ in the heart. That's in Galatians 2.20 and John 15, verses 5 and 6. A life of holiness is walking the spirit-led life, walking in the truth. When you walk in the truth, you stop sinning. The daily justification and sanctification empowers believers to see sin is true nature. As a number one enemy of God's people, to be hated, to be avoided, to fight, to resist, not as a friend of righteousness. Sin is a powerful force that separates us from God. Once we choose, it is our master. The surety, it leads to eternal death. Obedience to God's law, delightfully keep them, is the surest road to victory over sin, as promised the new overcoming repeated in chapter 2 and 3 in the book of Revelation and the seven churches. No winning against sin means eternal loss. Let's look at the psalmist. Let's look at in the book of Psalms, Paul and Jesus. Jesus asked us that if we love him, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 30. He commands it because he loves his father's commandments. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just I have kept my father's commandment and I abide in his love. John 15, 10. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Matthew 19, 70. Keep my commandments and live. Proverbs 4, verse 4. So obedience God's people 
always delight in keeping God's law. I delight to do your will, oh my God. Your law is within my heart, Psalms 40 verse 8. But his delight in the law of the Lord, in his, he made me meditate it day and night. And he said, like a tree planted by the rivers that bring forth its fruits in season, who sleep also shall not wither, and whatever he does, he prosper. That are those people who keep, who delight in God's keeping God's law, because that is God's will, and that is also the Father's commandment. So, he delights God's commandment. Those who are always conscious of God's commandment, they love and delight in them. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandment. Psalm 112 verse 1. Make me walk to, walk to the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Did you understand? And many people, is oppressive. We cannot keep. I will delight myself in your commandment, which I love. My hands also I will leap into your commandments, which I love. I will meditate your statutes. Let your tender mercies come to me, that I may live, for your law is my delight. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. This is Paul. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, with the mind I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Romans 7.25. Did you see that? Once we are empowered by Jesus in dwelling in our hearts through the Holy Spirit and his word abiding in us, we abide in Christ, we can keep the law. It is delight to keep God's law and we stop sinning. Result of believing Jesus and his word, this attitude of continuity of delighting, loving, keeping God's law and his commandments are the result of believing Jesus and his word. This is true, the empowerment of Holy Spirit that flow in the hearts of the obedient people of God like springs of waters. Jesus says, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But he spoke concerning the Spirit. Home, those believing in him should receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. John 7, 38, 39. Such kind and quality of Christian life, sinning is controlled by cooperation of individual and the indwelling of Christ and the empowerment of God's Holy Spirit. Believers can separate from the offensiveness of sin they see the sinfulness compared to the loveliness and the holiness of God through his perfect law. In this life, we are to separate from sin. This is Ellen White says, Through faith in the atoning blood of Christ, our precious Savior invites us to join ourselves to him, to unite our weaknesses to his strength, our ignorance to his wisdom, our unworthiness to his merits, then heaven employs work of conforming our character to the divine model. None can neglect or defer this work, but the most fearful peril to the souls. Great Controversy 623. All who indulge sinful traits of character or willfully cherish known sin are inviting temptations of Satan. They separate themselves from God and from the watchful care of his angels as the evil one presents his deception. They are without defense and fall an easy prey. Great Controversy 588, 589. So let us pay attention to this one. We can stop sinning. If we continue in sin, we separate ourselves and Protection of God is removed. The watchfulness of his holy angels when they start to deceive. So the problem really is the mind, the carnal mind. Because a Christian, according to Paul, 2 Corinthians 2.16, Christians should have the mind of Christ, not the carnal mind. So Paul asserts that when the minds of the Christian 
is still powerfully influenced by worldliness or living in the life of the flesh rather than the life of the spirit, sinning continues. It is because to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So a spirit-led life has power to overcome sin. Unbelief was the number one sin of Israel in the time of Jesus. As you read John chapter 8, 24, 69, and Romans eleven twenty. And even in this sin is the sin of the Christians today. Paul asked the Roman question, Christians, what shall we see then? Shall we continue to sin? That grace may abound? Certainly no. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Sin must be controlled or stopped by the power of God's grace. So the mind really is unbelief. Many don't believe that they can stop sinning. Because they are listening to the devil rather than God. That is not what the scripture says. Do we really believe what God says? God says that Christian can stop sinning in this lifetime. Who would say that we cannot? Those who do not believe, yes. But how can we stop sinning if we do not believe what God says? This is mistrust of the trustworthiness of his word. Then they said to him, what shall we do? That we may work the works of God. And Jesus said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. John 6, 28, 29. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Mark 16, 16. So the author of unbelief is Satan. The coming of the lawless one, the Antichrist, is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of truth that they might be saved. For this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe in a lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. That's clear. Second Thessalonians 2, 9 to 12. Very clear. When we don't believe, then Satan's deception is flooding and we are powerless because we don't believe. Many Christians actually do not believe God's word. They don't take it as final authority. They doubt. So Christians who do not believe and claim God's power are powerless to conquer sin. The mighty power of God to conquer sin is great to those who believe. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Just imagine that exceedingly greatness of his power, those who believe. But those who don't believe, failure. Paul repeats it for emphasis. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundant above all we ask or think according to the power that work in us. Ephesians 3.20 We have the power that God gives to us. We need to claim and believe, exercise living faith. Not the nominal faith, not the carnal faith. When we believe and claim God's power, the result is clear. Having been set free from sin, you become slave of righteousness. When we stop sinning, we live a righteous slave. Everything we do is righteousness because God has exceeding power, mighty work working in us. But now, having set free from sin, having become slaves of God, you have the fruit of holiness and in everlasting life. Did you see that? We're already stopped. We cannot continually sinning. We can stop sinning. But when we fail, the promise is, when we come, we have an advocate. But to live a life of continually sinning, 
is incredible creature. Sin is no longer our master, but the Lord, slaves of God, in righteousness and a life of holiness. Christian, stop serving Satan. Stop sinning. How to stop sinning? Delight the commandments of God. Rejoice. Believe that you can keep it. Because we pay attention to the city. Let's look at that. Jesus says, that, go and sin no more on two occasions. The Lord commanded, sin no more. He will not say that when a person cannot make it. Because once he said, sin no more, he provided power and grace. One was healed, a man with infirmity for 38 years. And he was healed. Jesus found him in the temple later on. And he said to him, see, you have been male with. See no more. This worst thing come upon you, John 5. So the words of Jesus are the words of divine empowerment to stop sin. It means with transformative resolve. The second, when Jesus declares to the woman who has allegedly caught in an actual promiscuous scene, he asked the accuser to stone her, but nobody dared to do it. All of them left, and Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. John 8. He told her to stop sinning. And when Jesus asked the thing, it is possible to stop sinning because his grace is sufficient for all sin. 2 Corinthians 2, 9. Jesus would not dare to command if the person cannot make it by his in enabling grace and power. And Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Who lives in you? Christ, the Holy Spirit, or other spirit? This is what Paul is saying. When Christ is not reigning in the heart, sin dominates and still much alive. Christ is dethroned from the heart. That's why Paul says, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. The word reign is a king. That you should obey its last. Do not present your members an instrument of righteousness to sin. Do not allow these body members, our senses, to be the instrument of sin. We can. But present yourself to God as being alive from dead and your members an instrument of righteousness of God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. What a good news. But sometimes we have this still sin is so powerful dominating our thinking, our action. Come back to your senses. You ought to stop sinning. This is what Paul. Stop sinning. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. These are powerful statement of truth that Christians can stop sinning. James powerful message. Therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Sinning is a powerful choice. Two masters. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate one and love another, or else will be loyal to one, despise the other. You cannot serve God and mom. But this principle involved does not limit to God's wealth and money. In fact, wealth can be personified something else. As we see in Paul making comparison, the two Lord of the Christian must choose. If we choose sin, to continue on sinning, our master is the author of sin. If we choose righteousness and continue a righteous life, then our master is Jesus. No other choice. No middle ground. Paul says, don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone, obedient slaves, you are slave of the one you obey. Whether slave to sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness. So, who is our, who is really is the one whom we are following? And Jesus answered to them, most assuredly I say to you, he who commits sin is a slave to sin. But we are already given freedom by the power of sin through his grace. So this is the whole issue. Who is your Lord? The ruler or the God or the prince of this world of darkness? 
the transgressor of God's law. The other is the Lord of the Lord of righteousness. So, again, let me remind you, abiding in Christ is the key to stop sinning. Everyone has this hope in him, purify himself, just he is pure. Whoever commits sin, also commit lawlessness and sin is not. And now, you know, he was manifested to take away our sin. In him, there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. The question, did you abide? Whoever sin has neither seen him or known him. Little children, let, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just he is righteous. He who sin is of the devil. And the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the work of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his sin remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has born of God. The abiding in Christ and his word is a powerful choice to stop sinning while abiding in sin. One can continually sin. Paul says, our old nature, sinful nature, does not easily go away. Its ugly head emerges when nurtured and entertained by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the world. It is not yet overcome by partaking divine nature. The power of God's grace. According to Paul, Paul says, therefore, kill other versions say. But say in the King James Version, therefore, put to death. Members which are earthly, fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the son of disobedience. In which you yourself once walked, you live in them. But now you yourself have put on, off all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, Healthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put on, put off the old man with deeds, and have put a new man who is renewed the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. So Paul asserts to kill, to put to death the last or the earthly things which part of the former life of sin before becoming, before coming to Jesus Christ. We can stop sinning. In fact, my brothers and sisters, I found it out that there are many texts how to stop sinning that we can stop sin rather than the Sabbath. This is really a truth. But many of us are blind. We have not discovered it because we enjoy sinning. So, it is the lust of the flesh that entices to sin, according to Paul in Galatians 5, 19-21. It is a willful and powerful choice. The result living in the lust of the flesh is death. Romans 8, 13. For if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of truth, no longer remain sacrifice for sin. This is the most dangerous state. But certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Hebrews 10, 26, 27. My little children, I'm writing to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone does sin, we have advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. 1 John 2, 22. So it's easy that you do not sin in case we sin because we don't live a life of sin. But since sometimes we fall into sin, then we have an advocate. If we see that we have no sin, we deserve ourselves. The truth is not in us. This is the nature of sin. If we see we have not sinned, we make him a liar and the word is not in us. Yes, we can stop. But we can also commit but not continually sinning. That's, that's the key word. Why we cannot claim to be sinless? We can stop sinning, but we cannot claim or declare sinless. Why? This is the grossest of all self-deception. We make God a liar. The word of God is clear. 
Then you have from heaven the dwelling place. Forgive and act. Then everyone according to all they do. Since you know the hearts, you alone know the hearts of every man. Why we cannot declare that we are, we are sinless? Because we do not know our hearts. Only God knows our heart. It's repeated. Only God knows the hearts. If we have, even if we have the mind of Christ. Of all the churches shall know that I am who searches the mind and the heart. Only Jesus, only God can search the mind and the heart. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind. Jeremiah 79 and 10. For the righteous, God tests the hearts and mind. Psalm 7, 9. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my my mind and my heart. Psalms 26, 2. Lord, my desire is before you. My sighing is not hidden from you. Psalms 38, 2. How can you claim to be sinless when you do not know your heart? Only God knows the heart. But we can detect or monitor the progress of our spiritual growth and claiming to be sinless is a crime before God. But we can stop sinning. But we don't say we are sinless. So trials to test in order to attain perfection. The Lord chooses his agents each day. Under different circumstances, he gives them trial in his plan of operation. In each true-hearted endeavor to work out his plan. He chooses his agents not because they are perfect, but because through connection with him, they may gain perfection. Possible. Colossians, uh, Christ of Ecclesiastes 330. But Christ has given us no assurance to attain perfection character in easy matter. It's not easy. A noble or round character is not inherited. It does not come to us by accident. A noble character is earned by individual effort through the merits and grace of Christ. God gives talents, power of the mind, we form character. It is a form by hard, stern battle will self. Conflict after conflict must wage against hereditary tendency. We shall have to criticize ourselves closely and allow not one unfavorable trait to remain uncorrected. Let no one say, I cannot remedy my defect of character. If you come to this decision, you will certainly fail in obtaining everlasting life. The impossibility lies in your own will. If you will not, then you cannot overcome. The real difficulty arises from the corruption of unsanctified heart and unwillingness to submit to the control of God. Christ of Ezekiel 3.31 The word before the plan was described enormously wicked. The wickedness and sinfulness prevailed the darkness. Yet amidst the picture, there was a bright shining. There was a patriarch and prophet, Jude, who prophesied the second coming of Christ, who lived differently for Enoch walked with God for 300 years. And he was not for God took him. Genesis 6.21 He placed God according to Hebrews 11.5 He could not be translated to heaven if he did not stop sinning. Enoch chose not to be infected by sin in living with others. His faith was powerful. The wickedness escalated to its pinnacle. The Lord saw the wickedness of man on earth was so great that every intent of the thought in his heart was continually evil, Genesis 6, 5. But God knows each man's heart. So he found there is one man, Noah, who was just perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God, Genesis 6, 9. So we find, you know, we find Noah was not contaminated because they decided to stop sinning. Noah was perfect. And perfection is by moment and moment, as we say later in his life, after the flood, he got drunk. Perfection of character is not once saved, like once saved, always saved. As we see other saints of God who stop sinning. Perfection of character. The most vivid picture in the Bible that sin could be resist, resisted and evaded is the story of, Jesus, of Joseph. In this case, a woman was the initiator to entice the last of the thieves. The capital of Joseph was his godly character. Who focused on God on everything besides 
He was handsome in form in appearance. Genesis 39.6 The temptation was so hot. Intensive and powerful invitation. Lie with me. The wife of Potiphar said, Yet he resolved, How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Because he knows the pleasure of sin temporary is not sin against Potiphar, but against God. Joseph's understanding of sin was not a violation of the law code, morality, and ethics, but personally against God. A very high view of sin. We do not know how long this daring, shameless woman making temptation, but the record says, So she spoke to Joseph day by day, lie with me. But he did not heed to her to lie with her or to be with her. So he went away. His victory over temptation was paid for many years in prison. But repeatedly it says before and after this event, the Lord was with Joseph because he chose to abide with the Lord. This is the key. Christian perfection is a movement. It's a moment. Why character perfection is governed by moment, a point of time? Because the scripture says a lot that God is testing righteous every moment as temptation of Satan is every moment also. The battle in the mind is the constant life, never ending until God's enemy is destroyed forever. What is man? That you should exalt him. You should set your heart on him. You should visit him every morning. You test him every moment. Job 7, 17 and 18. For the righteous, God tests the hearts and the mind. I know also, my God, you test the heart and the pleasure of that righteousness. First Chronicles 29, 17. But you, O Lord, you know me. You have seen me. You have tested my heart towards you. Jeremiah 12, 3. But O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous? This is the reason why the righteousness, the righteous falls several times. For a righteous man may fall seven times, but he rise again. Proverbs 24, 6. So there is a constant fight of faith. We cannot say, I'm sinless. Till this vile body is strange and passion like unto his glorious body. But if we constantly seek to follow Jesus, the blessed hope is our standing before the throne of God without spot and wrinkle or any such thing, complete in Christ, robe in his righteousness and perfection. Selected Messages, Volume 3, 3, 55. So long as Satan reigns, we shall have self to subdue, besitting sin to overcome. Acts of the Apostle 560. Appetite and passion must be brought under control of the Holy Spirit. There is no end of warfare this side of eternity. Christian education, page 20. Our strength, it is impossible for us to deny the clamor of our fallen nature. But through the, this channel, Satan will bring temptation upon us. But our Lord has prepared the way for us to overcome Jesus. Said, Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. So what's fullness and believing? Till the conflict is ended, there will be those who will depart from God. Satan will shape circumstances that unless we are kept by divine power, they will almost imperceptibly weaken the fortifications of the soul. We need to inquire at every step. Is this the way of the Lord? So long as life shall last, there will be need of guarding the affection and the passions with a firm purpose. Not one moment we can secure except we rely upon God. The life hidden in Christ, watchfulness and prayer are safeguards of purity. Pachak and Prophets, page 83 and 84. In the day of judgment, of course, the man who has retained frailty and imperfection of humanity will not be vindicated. For him, there will be no place in heaven. He could not enjoy the perfection of the saints in the light. He who has not sufficient faith in Christ to believe that he can keep them from sinning has not faith that will give him an entrance into the kingdom of God. Selected Messages, Volume 3, 360. What a solemn statement. So James says, Count it all with all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing the testing of your faith for those patience. In fact, 
He says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. When he has been proved that he had not committed, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord promised to those who love him. James 1.12 In the sanctuary in heaven is testing us. The Lord in his holy temple, the Lord's throne in heaven. His eyes behold the eyelid test the sons of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violin, his soul hates. Psalm 11.4.5 and test you to know what is in your heart, whether you would keep his commandment or not. Deuteronomy 8, 2. So, the psalmist said, Search me, O God. Know my heart. Try. Or the King, the No International Vision, Test me. And know my anxieties. So, perfection, character perfection is by moment. It's not continuous. Let's look at that in Elizabeth with Zacharias. Zacharias and Elizabeth were described as righteous, blameless, or perfect. They were both righteous before God, walking the commandments in the ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Luke 1, 6. But when Zechariah died, he did not believe. Luke 1, 20. God's word that moment did not maintain the character of perfection. He was mute until the birth of James. For example, let's go to Lucifer. You are perfect in your ways from the day you were created until the day. Iniquity found in you, Ezekiel 20. So perfection, character perfection is moment by moment. Only when the saints are glorified will be saved to claim as sinless. Perfection, sinless character and obedience. For example, be angry, do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Speak peace and pursue it. Psalms 34, 14, 13 and 14. Depart from the devil and do good. Dwell forevermore. Psalm 37, 27. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek with him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. These are clear. So the remnant of Israel, of Israel shall do no unrighteousness, speak no lies, and shall at not no deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. They shall be feed the flocks and lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. This is a prophecy that those who claim to God will be. So, in the book of the Bible, the earliest book, of Moses, Job, showed there was a man who feared God who attained character perfection. This man, Job, was not ordinary. He was rich, wealthy, of material position, a very large household, so that this man was the greatest of all in the East, in the land of Uz. Job chapter 1, verses 1 and 3. Rare, perfect Christian character. So rich, so devoted to his relation to his God. He was blameless. The Hebrew word tam, perfect, upright, one who feared God, shun evil. Shun evil or skewed evil is an attitude of keeping away from evil or turning away from evil. A willful, decisive action, movement to depart or away from sin. Remember, Job was wealthy. Therefore, temptation also are incredible in many ways and form, yet he did not yield it. Character before calamity. Job's perfection of character was Christ-like, displaying the universe as a showcase of God and we can that can emulate his maker to keep his law and live a perfect life. The details of Job's life of being blameless, upright, fear, shunning evil has been preserved in chapter 29 and 31. You need to read it. This was before Satan destroyed him with a brutal disaster and mystery. But in the land of us. All his dealing with all kinds of people, he lived and practiced the real life of what he learned from God in all aspects of his life. The conclusion are just the same, what Moses said and God's evaluation. Blameless upright, who feared God and shunned evil. Job 1, but God added, there is none like him on earth. Job 1a, still hold fast to his integrity, although you entice me Again, same to destroy, destroy him without 
any cause. Job. So meaning to say, even his friends who turn into philosophical enemies. Job chapter 3 to 28 and 30 and 32 contain different theological views, traditional arguments, discussion, accusation. And Job's defense was right with God. While others, instead of coming to mourn with him and comfort him, turn becomes the court of judgment and condemnation. They deal with the topic, the righteous or justified man before God. Accusing Job that he sinned greatly before God as the solid reason why calamity fell on him. But Job's friends and builder and so far, Elio, become judges rather than friends. He called them miserable comporters, persecutors, forgers of lies, worthless physicians, and tormentors. They are not friends. Although Job has a wrong percep perception and understanding, Job depends before his accuser. He maintained his position that he was right with God, with humility and integrity. He had wrong perception and understanding of many things. Why such calamity came to him, but he did not deserve. But in terms of committing actual sin, he cannot recall any. If you read chapter 29 and 30. So God did not discuss with him what is his sin. Instead, he asked almost 50 questions. Since Job asked almost also the same number of questions. Why questions? So God toured with Job with a question of terrestrial sphere to steal your planetary and heavenly realms. He turns the why question of Job to who? Job finally understands all the mystery of his suffering. He repented and confessed. Now I know. You can do all things. Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. So Job justified his moral character. Perfect. Job did not sin. In all these things, Job did not sin. Repeat it. All Job's friends in God's judgment have done fully defended God as a lawyer who did not pass the bar exam because they have not spoken of me was right as my servant Job. That's the analysis of God. Job 42, 6 and 7. He places every human agents under obligation to do his best. Moral perfection is required of all. To all. Never should we lower the standard of righteousness in order to accommodate inherited cultivated tendency to wrongdoing. We need to understand that imperfection of character is sin. All righteousness attributes character dwell God as a perfect, harmonious whole. And everyone who received Christ as a personal savior is privileged to possess these attitudes, attributes. And those who could be workers together with God must strive for perfection of every organ of the body and the quality of mind. Christ object lesson 330. So only Christ-like character brings us to heaven. Character formed to divine likeness is the only treasure we can take from this world to the next. How important then is the development of character in this life? Heavenly intelligences, that is angels, will work with human agents who seek to determine faith, that perfection of character, which will reach out to perfection in action. Everyone engaged in this work crisis, I am at your right hand and help you. As the will of man cooperates with the will of God, it becomes om omnipotent, powerful. When human and God cooperate, do together whatever is to be done at his command, may be accomplished in his strength and all his biddings are his enablings. Christ object lesson 332. Everyone who surrenders freely to God is given the privilege of living without sin in obedience to the law of heaven. So we have a promise. So the condition of eternal life is just the same. Perfect righteousness. The work of redemption, there is no compulsion. No external force is employed. Ex expulsion of sin is the act of the soul itself. We have no power to free ourselves from Satan's control, but we may desire to set free and our great need of cry out of the power, out of the above ourselves. The powers of the soul are imbued in divine energy of the Holy Spirit and they obey the dictates, the will fulfilling the will God. The only condition upon which the freedom of man is possible is that becoming one of Christ. So, as we come to a close, perfect character, now to him who is able to to keep you from stumbling, to present your faultless before his presence of his glory 
with exceedingly joy to our God and Savior, who alone is wise, be the glory and majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Jude 24, 25. So, God can preserve us. So, we found His, the fathers, the 144,000, who follow the Lamb, no fool, no deceit. Everyone who by faith, obey by faith, God's command, will reach the condition of sinlessness which Adam lived before his transgression. God answers all Satan charges with God's people, character, and sinless perfection will come to the end. My brothers and sisters, we can live a Christian life of character perfection in Christ. As I said, we can stop sin. All the resources of heaven is given to us for us to claim and to believe and to exercise. As I said, the texts in the Bible how that we can stop sinning are so numerous compared in keeping the Sabbath. That would tell us something. So in our next episode, since today we discuss that we can stop sinning by indwelling of Christ through His Spirit in us, to receive the grace to keep His word in us and to obey His command in His strength, we can stop sinning. But if we sin, we have an advocate. That is an assurance. So our next episode, we are going to discuss ways, according to the Bible, how to stop. Solid, how to stop. Because unless we don't stop sinning, we are candidates for hell and not for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Jesus came so that we emulate through his perfect character and obedience to his father's law through his love. We can stop sinning. And this is the good news. Yes, we can stop sinning. This is the truth of God. And if you believe you can stop sinning, then that is Satan lies and you believe what he preaches against God and his government. Decide now to stop sinning. Ask the Lord. We need to ask the Lord that he should help us because in our strength, nothing and nothing, we can stop sinning. But if we believe, if we claim, if we exercise faith, the indwelling of Jesus and his word in our lives becomes the omnipotent power to stop sinning. I hope what I have shared with you will become a power that generates, that energizes, that by his grace we can stop sinning. Thank you very much. God bless us.